you could only see who you are. Right? If you could only see who you are. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. What a sentence. In verse 19, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. And then he demonstrates that power, or at least talks about that power, demonstrated in how he raised Jesus from the dead. And we're not talking about just raising Jesus. From, we're talking about a, a, a Jesus who took on the sin of the world and literally became everything that made us undesirable and unlovable and rebellious. Like on the cross, Jesus became the worst of humanity. He became the murderer. He became the abuser. Like when the father, look, he took that on him. In Isaiah chapters 52, the end, and then all the way through 53, I mean, he goes through and describes Jesus on the cross and said it was God's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. The beautiful thing about Jesus, what what justification is, just really quickly, what justification is, it's not just God looking down at a murderer or a liar or whatever and saying, oh, I forgive you. You know, I'm just a God of love and it's no big deal. I forgive you. And then lets the murderer free to go murder. That we don't, we don't, that's not what the Bible teaches. That when God, that when God forgives you, he literally takes what was you, puts it on Jesus and it got punished on the cross. Jesus got everything you deserved. Literally, God didn't hold back anything. And the beauty of, 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 of redemption is that the is that the murderer it's not that he just forgiven which is wonderful he's no longer a murderer 